y a la vez el pueblo salvadoreño está siendo utilizado para distraer la atención internacional mientras se consolida el gobierno dictatorial, totalitario, marxista de Nicaragua. Perhaps I could explain some details of it to you. Acá puede observar unos documentos que fueron escritos por el Partido Comunista Salvadoreño. These documents here were written by the Salvadoran Communist Party. Donde se hace ver que Leduan, en 1980, secretario general del Partido Comunista Vietnamita, promete a, a Jorge Chapicanda, miembro del Partido Comunista Salvadoreño, enviarle más de mil fusiles M16. Here we can see the results of a meeting held in 1980 between Jorge Shafi Kandal, a member of the El Salvadoran Communist Party, and Mr. Le Duan, who is the Vice Minister of uh, Vietnam. Here in these documents they promise 1,000 rifles will be sent to El Salvador. Acá, ve, acá tenemos el itinerario como los fusiles M16 llegaron de Estados Unidos a Vietnam y luego estos como son enviados ya en 1980 to uh, the final destination of El Salvador first going through Cuba, Nicaragua and Honduras. Acá tenemos un fusil M16 que son de los que más hemos usado en el país. Here we have an M16 rifle. This is the one most commonly used in our country. Site that was manufactured in Vietnam. Esta mira es para el 82. This site is for a Soviet-made 82 mortar. Está ajustada para el 81. And it's been adapted for use with an 81 mortar. We also have some medical supplies, a walkie-talkie. This is the type that we've used most frequently. Rifles. Here we have a vehicle that was stopped in Honduras in 1985 after suffering an accident. Pero estos son los vehículos que nosotros usábamos para hacer el transporte de armas. But these were the vehicles that we used for the conveyance of weapons. Con el depósito secreto. And you can see the secret stores that were adapted to these vehicles. Un lanzagranadas M79. An M79 grenade launcher. Fusil M16. An M16 rifle. Los documentos capturados a media día. The documents seized from Nidia Diaz, where we find important information. An anti-personnel mine that was manufactured in Czechoslovakia. These mines have been planted along a corridor between Nicaragua and Honduras. Here's a code book that contains code names for different sites in Honduras. Otro lanza cohetes, RPG Here we have another RPG-2 rocket launcher. Una clave a code notebook. Y Grenades, which are the ones that we have used most commonly in combat. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Romero. Para llevar a cabo esta, esta team movement and gobierno de Nicaragua. And our need. There was a few that cooperated with them. were working for 15 years down the road. You know, had delay. It couldn't be nowhere else. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> introduce the President of the United States. Thank you very much, Vice President Bush, Secretary Schultz, Secretary Weinberger, Assistant Secretary Abrams, and you three gentlemen. Thank you for this eye-opening presentation. Thomas Jefferson understood that if the people know all the facts, the people will never make a mistake. Well, it's frustrating at times that information, like what we have just heard today, does not seem to be percolating through to the public. Even some well-intentioned elected officials seem to be operating under outrageously false assumptions. These captured weapons, the vivid description of subversive activity, and the portrayal of, pro of repression that is provi was provided here, all of these are proof of Sandinista crimes against their neighbors and against the people of Nicaragua. These weapons and the testimony that we've seen and heard demonstrate the magnitude of a sophisticated communist effort to undermine democracy in this hemisphere and to deceive us in the process. These rifles, landmines, grenade launchers, and other weapons did not just miraculously appear in the hands of communists in El Salvador or the M-19 terrorists in Colombia. They were placed in the hands of those who would eliminate liberty, wreck economic havoc, and destroy democracy by forces opposed to our very way of life. The regime which has built, and I was going to say nine, but now I've been corrected, it is 10 new prisons in Nicaragua, and runs drugs to poison our children is backed by an extraordinary support network of international communists. One doesn't need to be of a particular party or even privy to secret information to see what's happening in Central America. It's clear. Nicaraguan communists are using their country as a staging area for aggression against their neighbors while totally subjugating their own people. Their campaign of internal repression and external aggression is being aided and abetted by the Soviet Union, Cuba, East Germany, Bulgaria, Iran, Vietnam, Libya, and other radical states, movements, and organizations. The fledgling democracies of Central America cannot be expected to stand alone against this kind of concerted international communist effort. And let's make no mistake, this nation too is threatened. If we do not act now to counter this subversive aggression by helping the brave men and women of the Nicaraguan democratic resistance. Americans will, in the not too distant future, look to the South and see a string of anti-American communist dictatorships. And if that happens, it'll do no good to ask who's to blame. It will be an irreparable disaster. And that's why I'm asking the Congress to set aside partisan politics and act now to protect our national security by helping those who want a democratic outcome in Nicaragua. America needs to hear the testimony of individuals like the ones we have with us today, men who were on the inside, on the other side. Senor Romero was a former rebel commandante in El Salvador. He offers first-hand knowledge of the vicious crime the communist regime in Nic Managua is per perpetrating on the people of El Salvador. Alvaro Baldizan, a former member of Nicaragua State Security Forces, was sickened and disillusioned by the brutality, the repression, and the shroud of lies in which the communists draped themselves. And Senior Archibald, who was tortured and jailed, these three are only a few of the many who deserve to be heard by decision makers. I would hope that all members of Congress who have not had a chance to hear their message or have not seen this display will take the time to do so. The display will be on Capitol Hill next week. 
What we heard from these brave men also confirms that the communists have surrounded their aggression and internal repression with a well-managed campaign of lies, distortion, and just as we've been told here, disinformation. The masters of deceit have outdone themselves, but Americans can and will see through this smokescreen. The communist goal is to paralyze us, to prevent us from doing what is necessary to save Central America. But they will not succeed. Ultimately, in a free society, the truth will be heard. And today, I think we've got before us some facts that the American people need very much to hear. And I hope that all of you will make it a point to spread the word. The stakes are too high to sit this one out. Thank you. God bless you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>